So following on from the previous example, we're now going to introduce the concept of conditional probability. And I'm going to do it through these three questions. Now, just reading these three questions to start off with, what is the probability of a student studying phys physics given that they study history, a student studying history given that they study physics, and a student studying physics given that they do not study history? All three have commonality in the sense that all three have this given that part to the question. Okay? And this given that idea is then formally introduced in notation. So for this one, a student studying physics, given that they study history, is written like this. The probability of a student studying physics, given that they study history. And so we use this straight line, this straight vertical line between the P and the H, to represent the word words given that. OK? Now, in practice, about how to actually find this, if we're told that we know that they study history, so we've been given this extra bit of information, this information that we know that they study history, what's the probability of choosing a student that studies physics? If we know that they study history, then we know that it's only down to now seven possible students. OK? Because we know that they study history. We don't need to worry about the 8 and the 5, the 13 others. And so now, what is the probability of them studying physics? Well, there's three out of the seven that study physics. And that is the probability I'm looking for. So what you want to do is you want to cover up what isn't this bit here, the given that, and just look at that. So if it's the H, just look at H. So in this second example, a student studying history given that they study physics is written as the probability of H given P. And so we just look at P this time. And now the probability of studying history is 3 out of 11. And so that's my probability. Then finally, a student studying physics, given that they do not study history, could be written like this. So given that they don't study history, and so what we need to look for is just that. So that's the people that don't study history. What's now the probability of them studying physics? Well, it's 8 out of 13. And that is how we can use a Venn diagram with conditional probability. And we're going to introduce conditional probability more formally in the next video.